I was molested by an 18 year old babysitter woman, not a man, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And I began to fight with those sexual spirits. At the age of 12, I was breaking in cars and, 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 and stealing. At the age of 15, I was carrying guns. Amen. My block, you carried guns, amen. And um, at the age of 19, over 20 of my friends were dead, another 20 were in prison. So I grew up in that type of atmosphere. At the age of 16, my father was shot and murdered. And, um, and um, I was living a very bad life. And um, I, I, I got sick, I had a hernia problem, I had a hemorrhoid problem. And in 1993, my first year in college, I slept with a girl HIV positive. My sex partner left college HIV positive. And I was in and out of clinics for two years, fighting a sexually transmitted disease. And in 1995, while I was in a prison cell, I began to read my Bible day and night. And I said, God, I'm not going to serve you unless you show me who you are, because I didn't know who God was. I went to Muslims. I went back and forth. I studied with the Muslims for over a month. Assalamu alaikum, alaikum, assalam. And um, after I found like Muhammad went into a cave, I closed the Quran because the Bible says, eh, if anyone hears from an angel, they're disqualified. I don't want to hear from an angel. I was sick. I said, I need to talk to the master. I didn't know if I was dying. They kept saying, we need to test you for HIV. I said, no, I don't want to know that one. No, 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 no. I don't want to know if I'm dying. And um, as I began to read my Bible, I said, God, I'm not going to serve a God that I don't know who you are. I had a picture of Christians that lift their hand and they worship all the time, but they don't know their God. I say, that's not going to be me. If you want me to serve you, you have to come in the cell and show me who you are. And I begin to read my Bible day and night, eight hours a day, praying and seeking God's face. Hmm. And one night, I got sick and tired. I prayed with everything I had, and I had a visitation from heaven. The glory of God hit me. I was frozen. No breath went in and out of my body for 45 seconds. I was a bad boy. When people died, I didn't even cry. If you mess with me, I was going to shoot you on your leg. I put, I put a bullet right in your leg real fast. I didn't have to shoot anybody. I'm just telling you what was in my heart. Amen. <laughs> and when, when the glory hit me, I was frozen. I was in a prison jail cell. And, and I felt someone walking towards me. And my heart was like stone. And the closer the presence came, the stone began to crumble. And, 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 and they were crumbling, they were falling. And when it got down to the last rock, I, I wanted to hide behind the rock, but when it fell, I began weeping like a baby. I was crying, tears were flying out of my face in the jail cell. And, and, and because I didn't get tests for AIDS or HIV, or when I had a hernia problem, a hemorrhoid problem, when I used to bathroom, blood came out since the age of 14. But after the next morning I woke up, I was healed from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. 
Every week, I became an instant soul winner. Every week, I shared my testimony in the jail cell, what happened with me, and people would come and give their life to Jesus. People came into jail, they said, I don't believe in that Jesus, and people tried to preach them, and they couldn't get them to save. I said, hey, come over here, and I would share my testimony. They said, I'm giving my life to the Lord, instantly. But, when I first came to church, God said, Dennis, go over there. I said, give me the money, I'll go. I thought everything moved around money. Let me tell you something. Never ask God for money. Never. If you prayed that, go repent and ask for mercy. God came to me two months later. He said, Dennis, go over there. I said, give me the money, I'll go. So because I asked for money for 10 years, I was a broke preacher. God never brought money to me. He wanted to teach me how to live by faith. 10 years. I was known in my city as a broke preacher. When I was preaching, I preached the homeless for 10 years. They say, I need to eat. I say, man, all I have is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because my assignment was to preach to the homeless. But after seven years, Jesus visited me in the car. He said, I'm going to take me around the world. And my assignment changed and my finances changed. See, when you hear the word of God, it will activate the provision. When it was time for me to travel and I was a missionary, money came. Because my assignment changed. So you activate your destiny, amen, by hearing from heaven. But you will never have a harvest problem as a Christian. I want a house. I want a car. I need a job. I need, I need, I need. Those are harvests. That's like a farmer that go to farm. He said, he plant, he plant one apple seed. And he said, I need, I need, I need a Rolls Royce. You only plant one little apple seed. Limousine. Hello. Hi. So you plant a lot of seeds. You will never have a harvest problem. You always have a seed problem. So as you sow seeds, harvest will overtake you. I travel the world. I can live in any country I want for however long I want. And I don't look at money. I get to my last hundred, I'll slap it in someone's hand. Boom! Why? Because my last offering shows if I'm connected to heaven. If you clutch your last, your last seed, your last money, if you hold on to it, you're, you, 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 you're making a statement that your finances is not connected to heaven. It's the precious seed that causes a harvest. The Bible says, he that go forth bearing precious seed will come doubtless without a har- with a harvest. The precious seed activates the harvest. I was poor my whole life. I never knew money. I only put change in the church. No one prophesied over my life. I thought nothing was going to happen. I, I couldn't prophesy. I couldn't pray for the sick. There was no gifts. But I got sick and tired of poverty. Sick and tired of it. I said, I'm going to report the more. God is alive. God is on the throne. Every time I got to my last hundred dollars, I would grab people, you, 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 let me take you out to eat. And I would take them to the, to the restaurant. I'd sit down smiling. My last one, I said, eat, 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 eat. I said, no, this last thing is going to activate my harvest. And from that, it broke poverty off my life. Hallelujah. I have millionaire support, my ministry, amen, for 10 years. He makes over $190,000 a year. But that's not the testimony. He went from the bottom to the top. The testimony is if I call him, he flows in the spirit accurately with a pure heart. His prophecies are not false. He's in the spirit. Because most millionaires in America, they, they get derailed from the faith. Because they don't understand how to process money. I want you to prepare an offering of going to the pit, to the palace. I want you to get your best offering. And the anointing that has done miracles into here today is going to activate a season for you and take you to another level. I'm going to prophesy that over your life. Go ahead and begin to prepare offering. First, we're going to take tithes. And let me tell you something about tithing. Tithing come, is connected to a lot of your spiritual manifestations. The Bible said, bring tithes and offering in the house that there may be meat in my house. Um, that means you eat by tithing. How do you eat by tithing? Because the Bible says, he that is unfaithful with unrighteous man, and who will come into his trust true riches? Meaning, if you're unfaithful with your money, you can't receive true riches. Hello? You can be in church for 40 years and never receive. You can be listening to me right now, and you don't receive. Just because you listen, don't mean you're receiving. Hello? But as you honor the anointing, the anointing will work for you. When the, when the wise men came to visit the Christ, they came and they brought gifts. Never, bris- never greet the anointing without a gift. Hello. Get your tithe together. Another thing about tithing, tithing will control spiritual clarity over your life. 
When God say, as you bring your tithe, I will rebuke the devourer. He say, I will stop the devil from deceiving you from sound doctrine. Oh my Lord, am I preaching to somebody? You can't tithe into poor people. You can't tie into your relatives. You can't tie outside of the anointing. You can't give into poor is alms. It's a different giving. It's not tithing. Scripturally, tithing is to go into the anointing, the kingdom of God, the storehouse of God, and it releases protection not only to you, but over your whole family. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 says, Give a portion of seven, also the eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall come upon the face of the earth. So giving stops evil. If I preach on tithing, Pastor, the people here would, would tithe before they eat. My congregation in Orlando, they give before, they have to tithe. And they give big. And they move like this. They got the top paying jobs in the city because they're, they're aligning themselves with the kingdom. Tithing aligns you with the wealth transfer because God is only going to transfer the wealth into the hands of faithful people. Oh, Jesus. If you have your tithe, bring them right now. Just drop them in their tithe. I'm going to do offering after this. Bring your tithes now, please. No, no, no. I want to do it African style because I miss being in Nigeria. They come down dancing. Baby. I miss that, man. Only in Nigeria. You know, Nigeria is having one of the biggest moves now in the world. Yes. You know, no, no. I, I, I travel the world. I've been over 27 countries. They're going in the different countries and planning churches because of the ability not to break the process of God. I go into the most poorest places in South Africa. And I was in Cape Town. I preached in many churches. When after you finish preaching, they feed you food. That's their offering. But I preach in that general church, they say, here you go, son. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right when I get off the pulpit. No, I'm serious. And because they don't break the process, regardless of the financial state, God has been launching them forward, planning churches. Never look at your situation to sow a seed. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 4 says, He that regards the cloud will not sow. He that regards the wind shall not reap. If you, look at the, if, you, if you regard the cloud and wind, you can't receive a harvest. Why? Faith is holy. Faith is not supposed to connect with things of this world. The biggest problem why Christians can't receive is because they begin to live a life of faith and they try to reach their faith out and connect with money. Faith is not supposed to connect with money. You connect faith to the vision. Because if you connect faith to money, it presents a problem. Because the money is not there. So it paralyzes your faith and now you can't receive. Did you get that? Hello? Faith is holy. Faith was not created for this realm. It was created for the realm of heaven. So when you live a life of faith, you're connected with heaven. That's why when you have problem situation, you praise and celebrate to, to get into an atmosphere. Because in heaven, there's no lack. And as you tap into heaven and heaven is released over you, there'll be no lack in your life. This is not something I think. This is something I walk in. I was in South Africa five months. Nigerian pastor and another African pastor, they say, how do you survive? They were looking at me like this. Who paid for your bills? I paid for them myself, sir. <laughs> they say, how do you survive here? I say, come with me. I go to the bank. I get money. I say, this is how I survive. This is how I survive. I sow. I sow. Because I understand harvest will always overtake me if I sow the right seed. Hello. Come on. Give Jesus a hand clap. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Give me some of that. You don't have that drum no more, man. What happened to the drum, man? Huh? That drum blessed me, man. Tides, tides, tides. This is for tides. Come down dancing. 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 Come 
Oh, my God.